so one interesting question to start off with is we joke about Griffith uh, sitting under the table listening to his father talking, but how did that influence him as a kid? What was D.W. Griffith at that point? Well, I think the, the father was rather an adventurous type. And he, uh, he went off the Mexican War and then they, he went to um, California with a gold rush. Apparently came back with money and then on the way back uh, stopped in Louisville before he went the additional 20 or so miles to the family home and lost his gambling. <laughs> and so his uh, cousins, uh, were he then owed them money. Uh, the, the mother was the uh, daughter of a family that uh, l later on she inherited the place, Lofty Green, which is where he was brought up. And uh, Griffith was there with his father uh, for 10 years. He was born in 1875, and the father died in 1785. That gives you 10, 10 years. And... Um, father was not in very good health, apparently, and I, I think he just sat around and drank bourbon. But he had war injuries? What, they said yes, yes. But he was also in politics? Yeah, he had been a legislator in, uh, legislator in uh, Frankfurt, which is the capital of um, Kentucky, uh, early and then after the war for two-year session. Then I, I don't think he did much of anything. So I think the, the wife, his, his wife was uh, brought up reasonably well. And, and suddenly she was stuck being a farm girl. You know, the, uh, you know, the, the, the black slaves, or whoever they were, they're working there. They did the work, but that wasn't the case. And then after the Civil War, the, the, the black family stayed with them. And his favorite was uh, Aunt Easter. And she used to make wonderful biscuits for me. Loved that. And then her, her husband, the other guy, and uh, Aunt Easter's um, husband uh, was uh, good pals with old man Griffith. And uh, he, uh, Griffith said, uh, the, the David said that uh, that was probably his best friend in a way. They got along pretty well. Uh, what are you, uh, I'm answering your question. <laughs> <laughs> or not, but uh, uh, oh yes, well uh, uh, they had a sword on the wall, uh, which I had the opportunity of taking off the wall when I visited the the remnants of the Griffith family, and I flourished it uh, because I just wanted to hold. But I had inspired uh, young David. Uh, but it's not a Confederate sword; it was a Union sword, which had been captured in some way. It's odd that he didn't have his own. But he was really a colonel uh, because I looked it up in the Civil War records. So that's not a phony. He was not one of these Kentucky colonels that meant nothing, but he really was. And uh, what a lot of people don't uh, are not aware of is that, uh, uh, you know, Kentucky was a Union state. It did not join the Confederacy. But half the people, or a good number of the people in Kentucky, chose to fight for the Confederacy. So uh, the old man was kind of odd in a way that he went the southern route rather than the northern route. And uh, David, when he moved to Louisville later on, uh, said that the kids would, would uh, children would accuse each other of being either a rebel or a unionist. I mean, there was a, still the fight going on among the kids uh, 25 years or 20 years after the end of the Civil War, which I find interesting. Uh, what happened with, with Griffith is that uh, uh, when the father died uh, in 1885, there was n no money. Uh, the, there was mortgage upon mortgage, and they lost the house. And there was a public auction, and she ended up with a rug and the family cow and a few other uh, very embarrassing items. Then they mo she moved on to, uh, the mother moved on to the son for a while, and then they got themselves their own farm and made no money with that. It was a, it was a big depression, as you know, after a civil war that stayed, South stayed depressed forever. Uh, 
At this point, he's what, 10 years old? 10. And then uh, about three years after, uh, they, they moved to Louisville as opposed to living out in the woods. And it was only then when he moved from Lofty Green, by the way, when he was 10, that he went to school. And apparently he was uh, beaten up or treated rather badly by the fellow kids. And I think he was somewhat of a maybe a, a mama's boy, but not with a real mama, because mama was so busy, stuck with the farm and everything. Uh, the kindest one to him was his older sister. And the, and the older sister was, uh, you know, like 15 years older than he is. So it was like a mother. That was the closest thing. And she was the educated one. She was some kind of a school teacher. And I was told very good in Latin. But the point I want to make is when they moved to Louisville, I went through the Louisville directory. And the family moved in Louisville either every year or every other year. So we had five or six different residences during the next eight or nine years. Which means he had no stable life after the father died. And that lack of a stable life uh, continued with him throughout. Because uh, he always lived in a hotel, except for one or two years of his life. He always lived in a hotel. And when he was an actor for 10 years, he always went from hotel to hotel to hotel. So he never, for a guy who depicts home and family, the fireplace, the roasting an apple in there and the popcorn, he never had any of that. He didn't have the family dog. He didn't have anything. He was just a, a loner. And he stayed alone. Even when he was with people, he stayed alone. Is that why he became a writer? Just so he could live in his own fantasy world and write? Uh, Well, I don't know how true all of that is either about that he wanted to be a writer. I would suppose he brought up with poetry and novels. And uh, he, he certainly wanted to get away. He certainly wanted to get away from the farm. He wanted to get away from Louisville. What made him want to be an actor? Well, what a better, better way in the sense you're a kid and you go to the theater and you meet these guys afterwards and they're, you know, they're all talking big and oh, I played in uh, New York, and I did this and that. And Louisville was not a small town. It was a sophisticated, well-off place. It had a lot of uh, colleges, dental schools, medical co uh, colleges. Uh, it had uh, it put on various operas, including, uh, I have a record there of uh, Wagner Siegfried. That's pretty rare stuff. Uh, the very famous singer Nellie Melba was, was there. Uh, Broadway shows would show up uh, in Louisville. So it wasn't a backwater. I mean, we may think of it as that, but it really wasn't. It, it was, and, and he was very fascinated by um, the nightlife there, where the, uh, the well-off uh, Louisvillians would extol the virtues of the, uh, the wife and, and, and family. Meantime, they're going to these honky-tonk places and Having yes, girlfriends, and, and he saw that whole uh, sexual life where money is king. And uh, that made a big impress impression on him because in his order, that kind of a foolish autobiography that he, that he began writing there, he, he stops for pages talking about all the sin places in the world, New Orleans and everything else. But he was... Um But he was broke then, holes in his shoes, salesman, selling books. When he was a kid, he, he, he first he pulled an elevator, one of these elevators you pull with a cable, and he didn't have gloves, so his hands were really raw. And uh, that is not a fanciful story, because uh, in the directory he's an elevator boy, and uh, later on... Uh, he wrote to his nephew and described that life that he had because the nephew uh, didn't want to do any work and thought the world owed him a living. And he said, listen, when I was a kid, I worked. It was tough. And then he worked in a bookstore. But, uh, and the story is that he was more interested in reading the books than dusting the books. And then 
in the back of the store after hours or in the evenings, a lot of people would come and talk about uh, books, and he would listen in because that was his education. I don't think he had more than one year, if anything, of high school. Couldn't check that too much. He had very little formal schooling. But uh, obviously he was bright, and he read. He liked to read all the way through. He was always reading something. 